Hey guys, welcome back to Preview Lines Podcast. It's Sarah. And Whitney. Okay, one of your favorites is your toolbox tips. So Whitney, That's right. you ready to give it? Let's do it. Okay. We got this. All right, your first tip, Whitney. Mm-hmm. Tell us, triangulation. Am, oh. I say, am I even saying it right? Uh-huh, okay, triangulation. Okay. Tell me. Okay, so this is super fun, and we usually see this in a lot of kind of complicated, potentially toxic family dynamics. So what it is, is you've got one person who has a beef with somebody else. So let's just say it's Aunt Brenda, because it's always Aunt Brenda. It's always Aunt Brenda. It's always Aunt Brenda. So Aunt Brenda has a beef with me. Uh huh. Aunt Brenda's not going to come to me, okay? She's not going to say, Whitney, when you did X, Y, and Z... That really frustrated me, bothered me, whatever the case may be. She's going to go to you. Okay, so Aunt We're Brenda calls you're me. my cousin. Okay. Okay, so Sarah's my cousin. Calls Cousin Aunt, Sarah. Yes, Cousin Sarah. So we got Aunt Brenda, both of our aunts. Aunt Brenda's mad at me, okay? But she's not going to talk to me, so she's going to go to Cousin Sarah. And she's going to tell Sarah, I'm mad at Whitney because of this, this, and this. Aren't, isn't she just the worst? Ooh. And I'm going to get thrown under the bus. Okay. okay? I'm going to okay. get thrown under the bus. And Brenda's going to look to you for that validation and that support, basically just reassuring her and her thought process. That it's not her, it's you. Correct. And here's the thing. She can be frustrated and mad at me, but it's how she's going about things. It's because she's... Does that make sense? She were playing telephone here. Mm-hmm. So she's going to come to you and then she's going to say, now don't you say anything to her. So now she's going to put you in a really hard spot, okay? Now, if you and I don't even have maybe like a close relationship, let's just say we're holiday cousins. Yeah. We see each other at the holidays. No no beef, but we're just not super close. Right. So you can be influenced by that. So then now I start looking at you like, Correct. You're going to start viewing me differently. So then when we get together at... Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever the case is. I just hear what Aunt Brenda said about yeah, you in my so head. Then you're going to start looking at me and being like, Sada. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Oh, Sada. Big Sada. Uh. And so then let's just say after that get together, Aunt Brenda calls you again and she says, did you see what Whitney did? And you're like, I did see what she did. And then you know what? She's probably going to loop somebody else into the mix. We're going to say like, cousin Mary. Yeah. Cousin Mary gets looped in. And all of a sudden, Aunt Brenda kind of starts pinning all these people against me, but won't actually come to me. And you have no idea now no. why I'm side eyeing. Correct. I may notice that there's tension, but you're like, why? Yeah, but I may be very clueless as to what has actually happened. So not going because directly to Because no one is telling person. me what I did that upset them. She's not directing. Because I may Brenda. not be intentionally trying to upset. Right. I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I didn't do anything to upset her, and she's not valid in those feelings. I might be clueless that I upset her. So it's not going. So Aunt Brenda, usually she's direct and everything that we talk oh, yes. about her. But mm-hmm. today she has chose violence via gossip. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. She woke up and chose the aggression. So what should I say to Aunt Brenda in that As situation? As a cousin? Uh-huh. To stop this triangle. So if you kind of realize, okay, well, I don't have Whitney's side of the story that's when, again, you can validate Aunt Brenda's feelings because she's allowed to be frustrated. I'm not saying don't feel what you feel. Yeah. And you can say, you know what, Aunt Brenda, I can really see where that would frustrate you. I get that. Have you tried talking to Whitney about it to figure things out? Yeah. And just throwing that out there casually. That being said, Aunt Brenda may not receive that. Okay. She may not receive it and she may get defensive with you. So then you kind of have to be prepared. She might start doing the same thing to you. Okay. triangulating people because when we look at triangulating literally you think about a triangle you yeah got three components yeah. here and so aunt brenda ain't gonna come down to me no she's gonna try and get other people kind of coming against me gotcha because if you think about a triangle you can have two corners against one mm. always learning something new with these I'm toolbox saying. okay so with that you know you can do a gentle redirection of have you tried talking to so-and-so about your concerns yeah. Or you can even say, well, what did Whitney say when you when you brought this up to her? What was her reaction? Right. I mean, you're honestly kind of giving her credit, assuming that she has approached me. When she hasn't. When she hasn't. And that's when she's going to say, oh, well, I don't think I can talk to her about this. We all have that person. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it's very common. Very, and very common. Now we just named what they do to us. So you know yeah. it's crazy, but now you know. But now you know, and it's not in your head that you feel like sometimes people are against you. Right. Because it can happen. It's Now we know the reason. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. The next toolbox tip. 
Okay, so I saw this on Instagram, uh-huh. and we know triggers. Yes. And they said to find sparkle or glimmers oh, in your day. This. I love this. Let's So tell us what the sparkle or glimmer is and mm-hmm. how we should use this tool as we're going about our day to improve our day. So I love this because it's kind of um, that catchphrase of an attitude of gratitude. So what this can mean is that, you know, if you do get up five or ten minutes before your kids and you're able to have your coffee before they get up, you're able to have just that little bit of a quiet moment and you're just like, oh, I love this moment. You get a hot shower. Yeah. Um, you know, for me this morning, it was driving with my sunroof open and just enjoying how nice the weather was and yeah. kind of having my music up a little bit louder, just embracing these small parts of our day that don't cost us anything. We don't have to go, you know, extravagant, but it's just appreciating these small things. And like we've talked before with the losses in our life, you know, if I see a cardinal now or a bluebird or a yellow butterfly, like for you, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I, I see that little glimmer of remembrance or I see that little bit of comfort right that there. That makes us feel good. Yeah, it's a comfort for us. And, you know, I also got a Diet Dr. Pepper at Chick-fil-A this morning. And you know what? That's happy for me. So find I it. I love my happy. And look back. I, I try to start go and look back through your day and yeah. dig out those little glimmers and yes. sparkles and say, okay, that sunset was great. Or, you know what? That was yeah. really great. I got to see Whitney. Yeah. Or, you know, Whatever. Or if your child is something super thoughtful. Or cute. Or you're just like, yeah. oh, he was so cute at that moment. Yeah. Or your spouse remembers to pick up something. You're like, oh, that was so great. Exactly. Those yeah. little things. So little things. instead of remembering the bad, look at the sparkle, the glimmers and of your day. it's easy to look at the bad. I'm not saying that we, we all don't. do it. Yeah, we all do it. And it's easy to do those things. But if we try to reframe a little bit, which is something I talk about a lot in sessions with clients is reframing our thought process. Yeah. How we view something, how we approach something can make a huge difference in how our attitude is when we go to bed at night and then how we wake up the next day. Choose and end your day with glimmers of sparkle. Yes. That's your tip. Okay. I saw this um, talking about self-sabotage. Oh, it's such a thing. And honestly, sometimes we're not aware we're doing it. And one thing I was told once was... People self-sabotage to control the outcome. Mm-hmm. Like, it just dawned upon me. I'm like, yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. People are that into control that they would self-sabotage. So no, they know how it ends because the fear of that unknown uh-huh. or being vulnerable is too much for them. Yes. So this, I'm, I can go real deep. On go this. deep. Go deep. <laughs> I, we love a go deep moment here so, with Whitney. Of course, you know, whenever someone mentions like they need to feel like they can control something in their life, that tells me that there's anxiety present because what can make our anxiety feel better managed or not so severe. And it's when we can control something, 100%. whatever that may be. So like for me, for example, I don't love being the passenger in a car for a long car ride. It bothers me. I would much rather be the driver. Why? Because I can control my car. Mm -hmm. I can control the car that I'm in. I can control the car that my children are in. I can't control other people. I just can't. And even though like my husband or my parents or whomever can be a great driver, I honestly, I'm going to trust myself a little bit more. Okay. I get that. But at the same time, sometimes that can be a self-sabotage because I'm taking on more. I'm not willing to delegate. And so we've talked about the invisible load of motherhood or their mental load of motherhood. Oh. So that just adds another layer of, I've got to make sure that I fill up my car and have I had it serviced. I got to make sure that I'm aware all the time or I'm the one, you know, not sleeping and doing this long drive. So then I'm cranky and blah, 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 all those right. things. So it's weird when we try to have a little bit of control. Sometimes it can be a self-sabotage because we're taking on so much more. And to take it to a whole nother level of deepness right there is so often, especially when we're kids and especially if we're exposed to trauma consistently, we live in fight or flight. Yes. So we become conditioned to chaos. Mm. And so oftentimes when life settles a little bit or the pieces of the puzzle start to kind of go where they're supposed to our brain is like oh no 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 we can't do this because we we don't know how to handle being in a peaceful setting oh wow and so then that's when somebody self-sabotages and they create a chaos somehow some way because they're used to living 
in fight or flight because their brain is more comfortable in fight or flight. Let me tell you, I've dated I've dated this person. Mm-hmm. That was not fun. Yeah, it's not fun. And that's really a trauma response. Yeah. Wow. Because if you live in fight or flight, you're living in trauma. Oh. And you know, that makes sense just from my traumatic births, right? Like yeah. that put me in those states. Uh-huh. And it took a lot of work to get out of those states. Mm-hmm. I don't think people ever just realize that, especially like you said, their childhood is just, you got to go to the therapist to do that work. Well, and especially people don't realize too, when you start to come out of fight or flight, your hormones start to come down, that cortisol starts to come down a little bit. It may feel like a depression when you come out of fight or flight. Because you're so used to like high almost. Correct. And so you're used to being hypervigilant and like, what was that sound? What was this? What was that? You're used to walking around on eggshells. It's like primal. Yes. And so when you start to come out of that, you may notice I'm tired. I'm Ugh. sleepy. I'm hungrier than normal. What is going on with me? Well, your brain honestly is kind of going into a recovery type mode. Oh, wow. And so it is going to feel like a depression. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a clinical depression, but if we can associate we came out of a traumatic experience, like someone leaving an abusive marriage, yeah, and the divorce is finalized and they have their own place and all of these things. And you're like, I'm supposed to be the happiest. I'm supposed yeah. to be at peace and, and live my life. Of, well, what's what's next? And it's because you've lived at that high level mm-hmm. of yeah. I mean, I, people are addicted to that, right? Oh, that can be for sure. It's a chemical addiction if you really want to get down into the wow. nitty gritty of it. And so when you look at someone again who like leaves an abusive marriage and everything is said and done and they're finally safe and all those kinds of things, they may say, why am I all of a sudden depressed even though I know that was the right thing to do? It may not actually be clinical depression. It's that you're coming out of fight or flight and your brain needs recovery. Think about it like this. If you're in fight or flight mode, it's like running a marathon. Yeah. Like you're in it. You don't get a break. Right. You're going, going, going. So when someone is done with a marathon, do we expect them to turn around and run 10 miles the next day? No. No, because they need to rest and recover. Right. Same thing with fight or flight. Our brain is running a marathon. And when we start to come out of that, we need to rest and recover, but it might feel like depression. Wow. Okay, so all that to be said, get in therapy. Yeah. (laughs) Get in therapy. Walk this through with a trusted therapist Uh because you're going to think, I think that's probably how people go back to those situations Mm -hmm. is because you're like, well, this is not. They thrive in it. Right? They thrive in it. And then you get out. Not thrive. I would say that they're conditioned to it. I take that back. Thrive is not the correct word. It feels natural to them. Correct. They're accustomed to it. So they don't want to feel that uncomfortableness Mm -hmm. of like, okay, that's not what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But then you don't have someone like a therapist who's telling you, this is why you're feeling now depressed or or you feel like. While tired or lost. Yeah. And, you know, they always say that children tend to marry someone like their, if it's a man, they marry someone like their mom. Or if it's a girl, they marry someone like their dad. Well, if that was abusive when they were growing up, guess what? They are more likely oh, wow. to marry someone abusive because that's what they're used to. And that makes me even more want to do the work for my boys. Right. <laughs> you know? It's yes. Just, it's like, <gasps> yeah. okay, let's let's keep our therapy still going. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Wonderful tip. I feel like that made a lot of people see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It happens. Okay. The next toolbox tip. It's more of a question that we got. Okay. But I feel like it. it's a good tip to talk yeah. about is why we spend so much phone time on our phone scrolling Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we just talked about fight or flight, and a lot of people have heard about that. That does get talked about pretty frequently. We don't really talk about the fawn response. Okay, let's break down what is fawn. Fawn response, think of it literally like a deer in the headlights. They're like, Like you freeze a little bit. Okay. And so it's easier for us to disengage or disassociate than to deal with what's actually going on. So, you know, as moms, we do carry a lot of things. And so let's just say we decide, okay, today's the day to clean house or whatever. And you go to your kid's room and it looks like a bomb went off in there. Yeah. And you look at it and you're like, I don't even know where to begin. I'm so overwhelmed. Like, do I, you know, make the bed? Do I pick up the toys? What? Where do I even begin with all of this stuff? And so it's easier to be like, you know what? Why don't I just go scroll for a little bit because I can't deal with this Ooh. right here, right now. We disengage because we feel overwhelmed. 
And so, you know, let's just say we spend 15 minutes on Instagram or whatever, and then we come back and we're still overwhelmed. Yeah, because it, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything. And so we we tend to retreat. That's a defense mechanism of avoidance as well. Um, and when I say those things, defense mechanisms tend to get a bad rap. And yeah. I get why, because you think defense, you think negative. But, but at the same time, they are involuntary in the beginning. Okay. So like that fun response is involuntary. Yeah. You're not trying to self-sabotage by scrolling Instagram. You're just like, I can't do this right now. Wow. And let's also look at the facts. There's so much data and research to back up how social media is designed to be addicting. I was going to say your algorithm that's personal to you, that Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, Whitney clicked on this video. We're going to send more like that. Uh Uh-huh. Or the fact that it's the comparison game. Oh, absolutely. Keeping up with the Joneses, whether that means that... You have the same car or that your house looks like the same aesthetic as theirs or that your kids are doing the same activities as somebody else, all that kind of stuff. I mean, let's even break it into like, you know, it's addiction, right? It's like a numbing. It is. I mean, you're getting into... escaping. Escaping. What do we use to escape sometimes in society? Drugs, alcohol, Mm -hmm. painkillers. Numbing it. We're numbing it Mm -hmm. to not face what's reality. And it's, I feel like it's... As moms, too, mm-hmm. we are very overwhelmed. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. And Instagram, social media can just be the thief of joy. Absolutely. Well, and, you know, there's also a lot to be said for ADHD paralysis. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. And so, you know, we have these other factors that everybody is susceptible to. But if you're already struggling with ADHD, if you're already struggling with depression or anxiety, you're more apt. To get on to there. To fall into that fawn response and it just kind of feed itself and be a cycle. Now, that being said, it's not always a bad thing to kind of give your fawn response a little bit of wiggle room. But it shouldn't be like taking over your life day to day. And so what I would recommend, I don't know if Androids have this, but I know iPhones have this, where you go in and you do your um, screen time limits and you do that per app or just different things on your phone. Yeah. Or, you know, if it's one of those, again, you go in your kid's room and you're like, "Uh, I don't even know where to begin. This is horrible, blah, blah, blah. You're like, I need a breather. Set a timer on your phone for 10 minutes. Give yourself that 10 minutes. Give yourself that breather. You're allowed to have a breather. And so when that happens too, when your 10 minutes is up, don't go straight back to that one task. Yeah. Because you're going to get overwhelmed again. We know that. It happened before. Do something small, achievable that makes you be able to check off that productivity and it boosts your confidence. So it might be loading the dishwasher. That's perfect. It might be swapping the laundry, something that's going to take a couple of minutes, but it's not too much. So give yourself that break. Correct. Okay. We'll be back with more tips. That's right. Maternal mental health is as important as physical health. The Previan Lions podcast was created for and by moms dealing with postpartum depression in all its variables, like anxiety, anger, and even apathy. Hosted by CEO, founder, Sarah Parkhurst, and licensed clinical social worker, Whitney Gay, each episode focuses on specific issues relevant to pregnancy and postpartum. Join us and hear how other moms have overcome mental health challenges, as well as access tips and suggestions on dealing with your own challenges as moms. You can also browse our podcast library and listen to previous episodes at any time. Please know you're not alone on this journey. We're here to help.